And thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. It's uh, a great pleasure to be with these uh, illustrious uh, uh, other colleagues. Um, so um, I'll give you an introduction into where we are in, in, in the solid state journey. We're a little bit before these guys, um, but we are making quite significant progress. Uh, from my own perspective, I've been with Elica for just over two years, uh, but associated with the company for, for quite some time. Um, but one thing that, that kind of resonates with me, I used to work for a Trump subsidiary, Trump in Dittingen, making uh, fiber lasers. And we took it from the journey from raw technology where we were uh, drawing fibers and, and blowing up fiber lasers constantly uh, to, to actually getting those uh, to, to an industrialized state and actually also working with Foxconn and selling thousands of lasers that went into uh, manufacturing Apple products. So I kind of get the journey, uh, but clearly it's a challenge. It's always difficult to, uh, to get to where you need to be. So a little bit about Ilica. Uh, Ilica is a, a group of around 70 individuals, uh, ranging from chemists through to um, sort of lab scientists all the way through to engineers. And I count myself as an engineer, although I have a physics degree. Uh, what I've done is bring in uh, an engineering team so that we can move from really the, the research through the development phase and then through into pilot scale manufacturing. I'll, I'll say a little bit more of that shortly. Uh, Ilica came out of Southampton University as a, as a startup and has been going for around about 18 years. But actually in 2018, we did a, a bit of a pivot uh, into solid state batteries and got some significant funding to, to move us forward. I would say that really in the last year, we've, we've accelerated our development. It was slow, steady. We've actually made some very significant progress in, in the last uh, months uh, and quarters of, of this year, in fact. Um, so you see a little video there. Now, we do actually need to redo this one. This was about a year ago where we, we took our, really a cell at that stage, rolled it up. I think this one has cutting as well, so you, you'll see a solid state battery being cut. But the intention is to prove that solid state batteries have, have the real benefits of, of being truly solid state and not having uh, the fear of creating a fire and so on and so forth. And this is one of our key value propositions, uh, improving the safety, um, matching the performance of or exceeding the performance of um, uh, the, the lithium batteries, uh, but also operating at a wide extreme of temperatures um, that, that's all part of our va value proposition. So um, the way we've done this is to, to work with funding from not only uh, uh, we, we are, we are a, uh, listed on the alternative investment market, uh, so, so we have our shareholders, but also we have uh, UK and European funding. Uh, the history program is, is one of our big programs at the moment, a very significant program for us where we're working with a number of suppliers around the UK and Europe. Uh, one of those, Nexian, for example, uh, working on silicon technologies. Our anode is silicon, needs to be silicon. Um, and getting the right match silicon uh, of the anode to the cathode, but also ensuring that, that we have uh, something that we can control the expansion, because clearly that, that's a key element. Um, and working with, with a, whole, a whole bunch of other manufacturers on, on this journey as well. Um, the UK universities are particularly useful because they have incredible facilities. They've had amazing investment. And we can rock, rock along there and we can uh, do some X-ray chromatography and all, all sorts of different, different tests to, to understand how the batteries are operating. So, so really a, a very uh, good and, and appropriate way of using uh, funding from uh, the Automotive Transformation Fund principally in, in the UK. So that program's ongoing and is aligned to our development programs. Now, what, what we also realized we had to do from the outset was figure out how we scale up. Now, clearly, we couldn't just uh, rely on technology. We know we have to produce, produce these products. Now, uh, it's quite interesting. I think earlier in the day, there were some discussions around um, the changes that would be needed to achieve um, solid-state batteries in, in manufacture. So we commissioned a study with Comau going back a couple of years, and uh, they actually found that 70% of the equipment can actually be re reused. Some proportion of that has to have some modifications, but it isn't a complete uh, rebuild of gigafactories, which would be an incredibly expensive journey. Um, 
So, so we're pleased that we, we can show that and we can demonstrate it. It was a very, obviously there's no detail here, it was a very comprehensive study working very closely with them uh, and, and doing the, the, this, this very uh, clear assessment of, of, of where we stand. And of course, on one of those earlier slides, we had double negatives against the manufacturing. I guess I'd kind of dispute that. Maybe just one negative and maybe heading towards positive. So, um, really the last slide, and, and I'm sure we'll have some interesting questions, but we, we have a scale-up plan. We're, we are not actually intending to create our own gigafactory. We're going to get to uh, megawatts of capacity, low megawatts, to prove out the technology, to show that we can actually um, demonstrate uh, a capability, that, that it is be believable. Uh, we're working with many OEMs at the moment who are actually taking far more attention at the moment because we've recently passed what we call our D4 uh, milestone, and that is showing um, a reasonable scale battery. We've moved from cells to batteries. We can now call them batteries. And the OEMs are now starting to take attention. We're now briefing them. And we're anticipating delivering in quarter two of next year uh, prototype products that they can evaluate. And of course, they're going to give it a tough time. They're going to uh, try it out in, in great detail to see if they can destroy it um, and, and whether it uh, performs as expected and meets those, those key criteria. So we'll move through that pilot phase. We'll get to with the equipment we're building. I didn't talk about it, but on the previous slide, we're working with a company called MPAC uh, in the UK who are doing the stacking equipment. We're also working with ENR who are doing the, the coating equipment. But actually what we're doing is putting that equipment in there to show the capability not to get to, to the big scale. So this shows the journey and the journey ends, uh, or the first part of the journey ends with our first licensing. Of, of the technologies we're, we're now uh, putting through the development phase. And then we'll go on to license future technologies as we uh, develop the next generation products. We know this is a tough journey. Uh, we can learn together as, as, as part of this um, uh, sort of forum of solid state battery manufacturers. Um, but 10 years back, we're going to, 10 years forward, we're going to look back and we're going to see how these steps forward actually created the solid state batteries that, that we're actually looking for. So, uh, thank you very much indeed. I completely agree. We, we, we need some diversity in, in the technologies. We need some diversity in the supply chain. Uh, no, no manufacturer, no OEM is going to go with, with one supplier who has this unique, amazing solution because it could, something could go wrong. Technology is, is sometimes unpredictable okay. until you're, until you're in, into the volumes and, and have really settled in. Like these guys know yeah. a lot about this. So I think that's, that's true. So diversity is good. And, and uh, in, in all my previous experiences, having a competitor is, is, is a fantastic thing. And what we're doing, although we've chosen the structure of our battery to be inherently safer, and I'm not going to say safe for the same, same reasons. Um, what, what we're doing is, is we're proving this at ev every stage of the way. So we have a bunch of tests ongoing now with some of the constituent uh, parts, some of the individual cells, and then we're building up to, to batteries. So what we need to have is independent validation that we have a safer solution, and, and by how much? So it, it's, yeah, they can be safer. But it has to be proven, and, and, it, and it's got to be done. It's got to be done just right. Well, so the, the scale thing, absolutely agree. We, we sometimes at Ilica, we, we we try and be good at everything, but actually we know we're going to get to a certain level where we can demonstrate the base capability. We can do the theory. We can do the maths around how the price is going to be. But what we're not going to do is do all those detail, continuous improvement, marginal gain steps, which, which all add up to something really significant. We know this with the Tour de France and the riders and how they have to have everything just right and then they can win. So we, we won't delude anybody in terms of, well, okay. In fact, in the lab, we can demonstrate some fantastic um, 
uh, results. Some, some crazy what what hours per kilogram. But the question I would ask is, well, okay, that's one. Can you do 10? Oh, that's difficult. Can you do 100? We go through a bit of that journey, and then we get into the, the scale-up where we really find out what, what the key parameters are, and that's real manufacturing engineering. So inherently, it can do it. It can absolutely do it. Inherently, it has shorter cycles, fewer steps, and so on and so forth. But we need, we need that scale. Well, what we believe fundamentally <coughs> is that the solid state batteries can, can be recycled, but, but there, are, there are going to be some complex processes involved. Some of those haven't yet been, been established. But they should be recyclable more safety, I mean, particularly if it's fully solid state. Yes. So maybe that takes, again, the processing, it, it, it simplifies, and so on and so forth. So we're, doing, we're actually doing a study as part of our history program with HSS, HSSMI, to, to, to really understand the recycle, the reuse, um, the repair. So yeah. we, we heard about this earlier. And if we can push those forward, I think, again, working collectively to, to come up with these solutions, we have to do it. We, we've spent a lot of time talking to hypercar manufacturers, in fact. Uh, because we, we know in those very early days, solid state won't be the cheapest. Um, so there is a possibility if we can get the, the balance right here. And, and there's an interesting one that we haven't kind of touched on. Um, there's, there's the balance between energy and power. So ensuring that there's a question about fast charging. Yes, fast charging is possible. Uh, when I talk to our marketing team, of course they want fast charging, they want the maximum energy density, the volumetric and gravimetric, and so on and so on, at all temperatures. But there are compromises to be made. So I think what we started to think about in the fir those first implementations may be in a lower scale market, but a kind of higher value market, and there are some OEMs we're talking to in that regard, um, and, and do those trade-offs. Because yes, people do want to have a fast charge, but actually, do they need 10 minutes from 0 to 100? No. They probably need, I have a Jaguar I-Pace, so I know I need, when I get to 50%, I could do with putting another 20, 30% in there to get up to something that gives me good range. So I think there are some practical pro propositions that we can find that solution for solid state batteries and, and kind of get there quicker and not be constrained by the price in the very first instance, because that will take time. 